I recently came across a very interesting project on GitHub that allows you to install and run Windows in a Docker container. In fact, you can run this way any Windows you like from Windows XP upwards and it's fully automated process that also handles the entire Windows installation process for you. If you, like me, uh, use Linux or MacOS for your day-to-day -day tasks, you know that there are always that one or two apps that run only on Windows. So you have to have that copy of Windows somewhere if you like it or not. And uh, running Windows in a Docker container is so convenient and the fact that it's so easy and it's fully automated makes it a perfect use case for me. So let's see how it's done. I will use Ubuntu 2204 that I have installed on my Proxmox server, but you can use obviously any system where you can install Docker on. So let's just console into my VM. This is the Ubuntu and we need a browser and we need to search for Docker Windows, but it's D-O-C-K-U-R. And we are interested in that first link at the very top. That's the project. We can scroll down and there is a readme file which explains what to do. The most common would be either docker compose file or docker cli, but you can also use Kubernetes. And if we scroll further, you can see there is multiple Windows versions available. Obviously you can scroll further, but we will do it later on. Let's go back to the docker file, to the docker compose example I mean, and maybe we can use that because it's the cleanest I, I would say. So to run docker compose, I need two components. I need the Docker itself and the Docker Compose. Let's install it then. Let's open terminal and then you run sudo apt update. Let's clear that. And now we need sudo apt install docker.io and Docker Compose. Well, the thing is, I have it already installed, so it didn't do anything. But if you, if you haven't got those components installed yet, that's the command you have to run anyways. So I'm in my, uh, sorry, P PWD, I meant. I'm in my home directory, home Marek. There are some files and folders, but let's maybe create new one. I will create, uh, I don't know, docker comp directory. We will keep our docker, docker compose files there. I will cd to that uh, folder. And let's go back to the instructions. This is what we need for our Docker Compose file. This will install Windows 11, but let's see what Windows versions we have available. So Win11 argument will install Windows 11 Pro. Win10 is for Windows 10. We've got Windows 7. We also have Windows XP. And we also have some Windows Server versions. Let's start maybe with Windows XP, because the installer is just 600 megabytes. So let's maybe start with this one. How can we do that? We can copy our docker compose file. Let's just copy everything. Let's go back to terminal and I will vim, let's call it Windows windowsxp.yaml. Now we'll just paste everything. And what we have to change is the environment, which is Windows XP. And that's in theory all I need. But if we go to, the, to those instructions, to that readme file and scroll further down, we can see that we can select different languages. For example, English is the default language that will be downloaded and it's fine, but you can choose different one. But what I want to change is the keyboard layout because the default is the ENUS, which means English, but US keyboard. I've got UK keyboard though. So let me copy those two. And this is what we have to add to environment. Let's go back then, environment. Let's just paste it here and I need UK. Something like that. Let's see what else is there. What are other options we have? We've got storage location. By default, it's var win. Let's be more specific, maybe. Maybe let's copy all of that. If I go back, we will paste it here. And I want to be more specific here. I don't want just win. I will call it win XP. So I know this folder will consist only stuff that is related to this instance for Windows XP. And this is optional. And basically, let's just leave it as it is. Let's see how it works. I will save this file. So escape colon WQ. We can cut it again, just to have a look. That's our file. And we will be able to watch all the operation like a ISO download and installation progress using this port. This is VNC port 8006. 
I will be able to watch all that process by connecting to this port. So now the command I need is sudo docker compose, then dash f, then the name of my file, which is windows xp.yaml, and the word app. Now I click enter, and we can go here to localhost, port 8006, and we can see entire process. The Windows XP is being downloaded. And you can watch the Windows installation process, which has been automated. That means we don't have to do anything, we can just watch. All the formatting, all the other tasks are being done automatically. After a short while, the Windows XP is fully installed and I didn't have to type a thing. We went through fully automated installation process. You will see that a default user was chosen for us and it's called Docker. And we will have a look at that. It's a, another environment variable we can change. But basically, here we have Windows XP fully up and running. You can now personalize it, you can do whatever you want. After like uh, 30 seconds or a minute, you will see uh, this Windows XP, this is kind of a confirmation, it's not some dodgy, you know, Windows XP image. This is genuine Microsoft ISO, which you can verify with MD5 hash or any way you want, but you will have to activate it. Means, yes, you still need a Windows key, etc. to activate the Windows. But uh, that's fine, never mind, I wanted to show you something else. I can, of course, now shut the instance down, turn off computer, but what I can do, if we go to terminal, you can see that Windows is still running. This is basically this container with Windows XP inside. What I can do, I can Ctrl C it, I will press now Ctrl C, you can see gracefully stopping. This is very important, because that means it's not like abrupt operation which will break your windows this is done really nice way it gracefully it will it will simply like turn off your computer for you so you can control c here and your windows xp or any other windows will be gracefully stopped let's now get rid of this instance maybe and let's uh, install something newer first let's go to that var file the folder and this is the folder we named Windows XP. We renamed the win to WinXP in our Docker Compose file. Let's get rid of that as well. And let's go back to the previous folder. We still have this Docker Compose file. Let's rename it. We should now have Windows 11. Let's amend it then. First thing I want to change is from Windows XP, the version argument should be Win11. Because if we go back to those instructions in readme file, we will see that this is the value I have to have there to install Windows 11 Pro. Environment version Win11. What about that default user Docker? I don't want <laughs> to be called Docker, you know, I want to be called Marek. Let's see how we can change it. We scrolled through <laughs> quite a few interesting options. So username and password can be specified using these arguments again. So let's copy them. I will choose Marek. And for password, will be pass1234, a super secure password and exclamation mark. But uh, what else have we got here? Have a look. RAM size and CPU cores. By default, this container will have two CPUs and four gig of RAM. I can amend that. I can amend using RAM size and CPU cores arguments. So let's do that. I will add that to my Docker Compose file. RAM size eight gig, that's fine. CPU cores four. That's still twice as much as we had with the default values. And for Windows 11, <laughs> yes, I would say that should be minimum recommended. Let's have a look if there is anything else that is interesting here. Oh, disk size. Default size is 64 gig. We can change it using the disk size value. Let's add that as well. But maybe not 256, maybe 100. 
100 gig or volume we will again call it different not xp this time it will be win 11 this will be the volume on our ubuntu server in the var folder another folder called win 11 will be created and it will be bound to the storage on the container itself if you wonder what is this dev kvm the kvm virtual machine is a technology that works in the background and and it lets all of that happen i mean the kvm virtual machine is passed through to this docker container and that is really how this windows is able to run on on the linux instance at all because you can't just install windows on top of linux you need some type of virtual machine and kvm is a native built-in linux solution to do just that so it's basically a linux container that runs windows virtual machine inside it this is the entire secret to how it works in the first place the last thing i wanted to talk about are these ports we know port 8006 already this is port for vnc and this is how we can kind of have a peek at the installation the iso download and installation process because we can run it in the browser but there are two more ports that are passed through to our container and in fact 3389 is a port for rdp connection that means we can actually rdp to our instance which is much better because this vnc port you can see the graphic is very poor because this is just like a browser browser like a connection and the graphic isn't that great and even if we checked that windows xp it was <laughs> like blurry and uh, not really clear font but we can rdp to our instances which will improve the quality and we will feel more like uh, as if we were na natively sitting in front of that desktop okay so let's try all of that first let's save the file escape colon wq so now what we need is sudo docker compose dash f but this time it's windows 11.yaml and the word up enter and let's have a look what's going on We'll go through the ISO download process. And the installation process. We can just go for a coffee. It took a while, but we have welcome screen, screen now. But what, what changed now, we had a user Marek. So this one took uh, definitely longer than for Windows XP. But uh, first thing, let's try to RDP to this instance. Because you can see this is poor quality. The, the fonts are blurry and the VNC is not really what we need. So this is the RDP client from my Mac OS. I can add PC here. And the IP address is 192.168.1204. And I remember that because the last, the IP address, the last digit is the same always as my host, as my Ubuntu host, which is 204 as well. User account, ask when required, that's fine. Let's just add it and let's connect. Now I can use username and password that I passed through in my Docker Compose file, which was Marek and pass1234 exclamation mark. Super secure, continue. Well, that's big. But now you can clearly see the difference in the quality. Now I am RDP'd to my instance, which means if I go here, the VNC is now logged off because I can have only one session. And my current session is this one. It's RDP from my Mac. So let me disconnect. And let's just close it. So we can see RDP works as expected. I can get back to my VNC session if I need. All right, so I, we know that I can simply control C here to shut down that Windows. I can obviously also click here, oh, sorry, and just shut it down here. If I shut down here, we will see in the terminal that this Windows instance has been shut down. And there it is, shut down completed. But uh, how do I start it up again? That's very easy. We can use command docker compose dash f, then our docker compose file name, and this time not up, but start. So just start. Oops, sorry. <laughs> 
not that sudo you have to be a root user to, <laughs> to run that command sorry sudo docker compose f let's run it again password now it should work starting windows done that means i can connect to it again Great, let's go back here. Okay, what I can do now, I can also do docker compose stop. This will also stop Windows. So you can see that there are many ways you can start and stop your Windows instance, or container, I should say. Let's go to the var folder again. So this is the win11 folder that has been created for us. Let's go there and see what's, what's inside. You can see we have the image and we have all the files that are needed to run this container. And if we check the size of it, we can see that image location is 100 gig. By default, it was 64 gig for Windows XP. We haven't checked that, I know. But by default, 64 gig is allocated for, the, for any instance, but we changed it in our Docker Compose file to make it uh, slightly bigger. Everything works as, as expected then. So you can see how easy it is to change just one or two things now in our Docker file and run a completely different version of Windows. Or you can create multiple Docker files, Docker Compose files, and run multiple versions at the same time if you want. It's neat, quick, and easy solution, so I can definitely recommend it. And no, this is not sponsored by in any way, this is just my personal opinion. I also like the fact that it runs within KVM, because I know that the underlying technologies like uh, security enhanced Linux and uh, secure virtualization will keep that instance secure and completely isolated from anything else that I run on my Ubuntu server. Plus, check this out. Using this method, I don't have to think about KVM at all. It's barely visible here. If you ever configured something in KVM, you know it's it's not that straightforward. To, pre to prepare KVM for Windows installation, and there is like, you know, few bits and bobs that you have to configure first. Here, all the process is automated from start to the end. So I hope you like it too, and thank you for watching.